Madeira is actually an island located off the coast of Morocco, directly in the trade winds between Europe and America. So all the boats used to stop there to pick up uh, wine and other provisions, and they used to use the barrels of Madeira um, as ballast. And one day, one of these boats arrived in Savannah or Charleston or wherever it was going and forgot to unload the cargo of Madeira, and it returned to the island where they figured tasted it and figured it was much, much better than before it left. And they realized that having crossed the oceans twice in the holds of the ships had heated the Madeira and improved it. So for many years, it was a law you couldn't sell any Madeira until it had been shipped around the world twice. But today, that's slightly impractical. But we still simulate the voyage of America by heating it um, to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 55 Celsius, roughly. And that uh, it takes three months, three month heating process, and that simulates the voyage. But not only was that why it was the most American drink, but it was actually um, the, the biggest selling wine in America for a very long time. And very popular, George Washington drank a pint of Madeira every day for dinner. Um, Thomas Jefferson was a great Madeira fan. Betsy Ross, when she was sewing the flag, had a side table of Madeira on it. The Constitution and Declaration of Independence were both toasted with Madeira. And it was really um, there were a couple of things which damaged Madeira, again, American-induced. But um, one was phylloxera, uh, which came from America, destroyed the vines in Europe. But the, the cure came from America, which is to graft onto American rootstock. And then um, the other thing which was even more devastating was prohibition, because 95% of Madeira was being sold in America. 5% you know, went to England and Russia. And when the prohibition came along and wiped out their market, they had to rip up the vines and plant other, other crops to, to sustain themselves. 